Hey, everybody. I'm Colleen Johnson, and I'm here with fellow coach Randy Hale. We're going to talk for a few minutes about predictability in Agile. Um, if any of you saw the recent State of Agile report that was published, I think the number two reason listed for many companies in adopting Agile practices was predictability. Yet we hear all the time that you cannot have fixed delivery dates with Agile practices. Um, so we're here to debate this a little bit and talk about our perspectives on whether or not you can have predictability in Agile. Um, I am a strong believer in leveraging past data through tools like Monte Carlo simulations to help forecast. Um, so I would say I, I think you can deliver predictably with Agile practices, but I think um, most of us are probably going about it the wrong way, right? So I guess I would challenge some of the methods that we're using right now to try to achieve that predictability. But Randy, what have you seen? Yeah, I completely agree. I think you hit on something really important, which is predictability of what? You know, what do we actually want to be predictable? And I think the challenge most organizations have is they're focused on predictability measures that are not the most important thing or not the most impactful thing. You know, predictability of are we hitting our budget exactly on, on you know, to the penny? Are we hitting the delivery date? We should be predictable at what's the value of what we're doing and how is it creating an impact? How is it impacting our, our customers, our internal users, uh, whoever they might be? And um, yeah, I think there's just different things that should be focused on. Yeah. Yeah. And I think predictability requires a couple of things in your process that we often ignore. Um, you know, when we look at things like Little's Law, it assumes some stability of your system that is often hard to achieve, I think. And if we even take a step back from the date component component of finding an accurate date and having ways to achieve that date, um, there's this other element of, is our system stable enough to make sure that we can deliver on that date? And I think that's the part too, where we, st we have to start looking at things like how we're pulling work in, who's doing what work, are we maintaining a consistent amount of work throughout our team? All of those types of factors are going to be important if you're trying to have predictable delivery mm -hmm. of value, predictable delivery of, of on-time dates, if that's an important part of your business, which I think it is for most. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And what you just said triggered another thought. Um, most organizations have what I would consider heavy governance that is intended to reduce overall risk. So as an organization, we want to manage our overall risk and we've got this heavy governance process that dictates decisions and dictates the things that we track and the things that we focus on and I've seen in a number of organizations, the culture that emerges is this sort of um, compliance, check the box culture. And the, the thing that matters more than anything to be safe in that organization is to be able to show up at a you know executive program review and demonstrate that you followed the process. And as long as you followed the process, you're good. Doesn't matter if anything came out the end that anybody bought or got value from. You're safe internally because you followed that governance process. I think that is, you know, one of those double double edged uh, um, situations where you're doing your best to try to mitigate your risk and ensure predictability, and it's actually having the opposite effect. Yeah. Yeah. I think when you start to, you, you touched on a couple of things there, Randy, I think the part about risk is really an interesting part of the conversation that we often leave out. And when we're thinking about how can we forecast accurately, how can we set dates accurately? Risk is an important part of that conversation. And I like to flip it into um, how comfortable are we with being wrong? Right. And so if you look at it from that perspective, um, you know, a lot of organizations might tell you they want 100% accuracy. Well, that's going to mean our date looks very different. And can we ever actually be 100% sure um, based on all of the variability and not just in our system, but in our business and how we approach how we deliver value? So I, I like starting that conversation with um, if dates and predictability are important to you, what's our flexibility with um, how, you know, how often can we be wrong? Um, and that's yeah. a, that's an interesting conversation to start to have because it changes um, it changes your forecast. Right. Yeah. Well, and it becomes a self self fulfilling prophecy of sorts when 
the environment supports sort of that, you know, confirmation bias kind of behavior where we spent all this time on this business case. Like we know the business case was, was rigorous and we've made, you know, we have all this sunk cost up to this point. So often the culture just reinforces double down, get the thing done. And there's not the the courage or the safety within that organization to say, I think we're building the wrong thing, or I think we're building it in the wrong way. Um, and those conversations don't happen near enough. You want to, you want to reduce risk, stop building the wrong thing sooner. Yeah. Well, I mean, what you just said about the cost of planning, the cost of getting to that date is probably one of, um, I don't know, like the biggest thorns in my side about a lot of the agile practices that we have, they require a ton of upfront planning to try to feel like you've got a, 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 a date, right? And um, it's wrong before we even start that work. And then, like you said, I think because we've spent so much time and energy coming up with that plan, we hold it tighter because we don't, you know, we've come up with a plan and it can't be wrong instead of, um, you know, coming up with a more lightweight approach of getting to, to that target date and um, you know, that that concept I mentioned of leveraging Monte Carlo simulations and things like probabilistic forecasting, where you're using past right. data for that are a pretty lightweight way to start to get future, you know, future delivery dates, right? Absolutely. Where you're not having to pull in an entire development team or have stories that are fully written um, in order to story point them. We can just start to use some of the data we have on how long things in the past have taken us and, and um, how much work we've gotten done in the past and run models to tell us when the when we can expect to get future work completed. Yeah, I, I love the notion of the Monte Carlo simulation and a thing I've done in a few different environments where we didn't necessarily have what we needed to do that as quickly as we wanted to was we added a simple icon to like the executive level dashboard that showed an approximation of where are we in the cone of uncertainty? Are we at the biggest part of the cone of uncertainty? Are we in the smallest part of the cone of uncertainty? Because the conversation we want to emerge at the executive level is, how do you move this thing through the cone of uncertainty? Yeah. Yeah. And does it, is there ever, you know, just like the, you probably never have 100% accuracy or 100% um, confidence in a forecast. Can you ever be fully out of that cone of uncertainty or fully certain? Um, so, you know, because if we're always looking to incorporate feedback and change what we're working on based on feedback, there's always a little bit of swirl. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, the, the big takeaway for me is I think every organization would benefit from adding something like that cone of uncertainty, something that helps just raise the visibility that we are not dealing in you know the simple domain where all we have to do is you know it's a bunch of dots and we just connect all these dots and we're going to get it like we're con we're connecting shapes that we didn't even know were shapes <laughs> that are part of the thing we're trying to to accomplish so bringing that awareness into the conversation that yes there's a plan that plan uh, until we're <laughs> until we're at the final day of the plan. That that version of the plan maybe is 99% accurate. <laughs> Even the last day, you're probably still going to have something emerge. But I think organizations need to embrace and, you know, har harness the uncertainty, you know, yeah. work with it in a more productive way. And I think that, to me, helps better solve the predictability challenge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think what you're describing too is a little bit of that concept of deterministic versus probabilistic thinking, right? And um, being aware that there's more than one possible outcome for the work that we're doing right. instead of there only being one, one set of features that we're going to deliver on this date. And that's exactly what's going to happen six months from now. We're saying we're going to be open to new things coming in, scope changing, approach or technologies changing, and the date potentially changing. So I think that's where that probabilistic, the probabilistic approach also means that you're continuously reforecasting based on all of those things potentially changing. Yeah, love it. Could not agree more. Awesome. 
Well, thanks for joining us today. Stay tuned for more topics from the team at Agile Velocity.